Testing. G'day. Hi. Hi. G'day. It's Dylan O'Donnell. I just wanted to go through something that I've been meaning to do for a while, which is a demonstration of the all-star polar alignment from start to finish. It's a really good method of polar aligning your telescope. It's much quicker than drift alignment. It's just as good as something like a, a pole master. Uh, we have the little polescope in your in your mount, which helps you uh, lock onto a pole star and, and basically align it uh, that way and with a little software trickery as well. But it is actually a really, really easy way to polar align your scope. And um, I think a lot of people might be confused about how it's used. So I just wanted to do a, a straightforward run through, uh, a live run, run through on actual stars uh, and show you how it works. It's not that hard. Uh, and if, you, if you're like me in the Southern Hemisphere, we don't have a pole star anyway to go off. And, uh, or, and if you're in an urban situation like I am, you can't even see the South Celestial Pole or the North Celestial Pole, so you need another way of polar aligning your gear. It's going to get dark here, and um, when it gets dark, I'll try filming again. It's going to be probably a bit grainy, and um, it's going to be dark, so I don't know how well the video quality will turn out, but I really do want to do a, an actual live demonstration of the All Star Polar Align. I've just thrown up the um, Rasa tonight, so this is ready to go. Hopefully, this turns out okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is turn on the mount. Hopefully you can read that okay. Verifying packages. Enter to begin. It's going to um, set switch position, which means it's just going to move itself around, make sure it's in dead center. Now once the time, uh, make sure you have RTC enabled in your mount so that it remembers the time. That's in the uh, menu option. Uh, but the time, if you do have it set to remember, it should be pretty close. And there we go. Daylight savings here. Date. And we're going straight into two star align. It's going to select the star. Now the star that it selects um, are basically what's visible in the sky right now and what's bright and it will choose stars that are on either side of the meridian so that it gets a good sense of where it is. Uh, now it's obviously way too bright now so I'm going to come back and we're going to keep going from there. And we're off. We have to find this star. So I can see it up there, but uh, we've got to get it on the screen here. Now, if I had a finder scope, it would be easier for me to find the star because we're at the beginning of the alignment. It's in the right direction, but it's not really there. I'm going to use the arrow buttons on the control here to, uh, to just go through and try and find this star. This, this first bit's a bit fiddly, but as you go through a few stars, it'll get better and better. One thing that I've been asking uh, the Celestron engineers for is a spiral search feature. Uh, now spiral search would be really handy in this sort of situation where we are near our target but we just want to search around and what you end up doing in this situation if, especially if you're not using a finder scope is just sort of going up and down and looking around when you've got the star the star's just here on the edge here when you've found your star, it wants you to press enter. Press enter, and en enter goes into the align mode, which is where we can be much finer with our arrows. And when you hit an arrow, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make a huge movement. So now, the star's here, I'm just gonna use my arrows to get it into the middle here.
And of course you might be doing this with an eyepiece so you'd just be on the controls using the arrow keys I'm trying to get it into the middle. That's pretty good. So I'm going to hit the align button now. I'm hitting align. I knew this would be hard in the dark. <laughs> And it wants us to select the second star, and it's automatically selected another star off in the west. Um, sorry if you hear me hitting the microphone or slapping my skin. I'm getting absolutely slaughtered by mosquitoes out here, but this is a live demonstration. Okay, we're on to star two. Select star two, it's suggesting Aldebaran, so I'm going to hit enter um, just to see where it is. It's picked Aldebaran, it's slewed across. But I can't see it on the screen at all. So I'm just going to try, as I did before, just going left and right. There we go, I found it. <laughs> so I'm going to hit enter because we found it and it's gone into the align mode, which makes the up, down, left, right arrows uh, less sensitive, so it's a bit slower. And I'm just going to nudge it in. That is good. So now that it's in the center, hitting a line, and it's asking us if we want to add calibration stars. Now you can add up to four calibration stars. Uh, the guys at Celestron reckon that they get away with two stars and then two calibration stars. I always go the full, full thing. I always go the four calibration stars. But uh, just to keep this video shorter, I might only go two calibration stars, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. So we're going to go, yes, we're going to add a calibration star, so I'm going to hit enter. It's selected Pollux. So I'm just going to go enter and see where the, where the mount takes me. Pollux is looking straight into my house. So you can see there, there's no way the scope is going to see anything there. So we're going to skip it. Now you might think you're stuck at this point because it's selected a calibration star, you're slewed to it, but all you need to do is hit back and that gets us back to the select star, it's going to select another one. So I'm going to hit enter again, I'm going to choose another one. Once again I'm going to just move around and see if I see anything on screen. There it is. It's popped in. So I'm not doing anything different to what I did the first few times. We've got that in the middle now. So I'm going to hit align. It's asking me if I want another, add another calibration star. I do. You'll notice this time, it's got the star pretty much almost bang in the center. So as it goes through its calibration stars and alignment stars, it sort of gets better and better each time. And pressing align. It's bang in the middle now. And it'll ask me if I want to add another calibration star. And we've got two calibration stars now, so we could probably be ready to do the polar alignment step, but I'm just going to add one more to see if it uh, hits it really close again. Now that we're on the third cal star, it's there straight away. And that's good. So I'm going to hit align. And it's going to ask me if it wants to add, if I want to add another calibration star. And I'm going to say no. I think we got enough. So that would be hitting back. And it says align success. So we're aligned. We're aligned, but we're not polar aligned. That first alignment, the two-star alignment, is just the um, scope getting a good idea of where it is in relation to the celestial sphere and all the stars and whatnot. Um, so that star that we were on was called Castor. I can still see it on the screen there. It's in the middle of the the screen. So we're going to use that as our um, alignment star because 
the scope is pointing in one direction. It's uh, it's close to the meridian. It's like way out onto one side. So it's a good it's a good star to to just use our polar align on. All star polar align means you can align on any star. So we're just going to use that one. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into stars, name stars, Casta, which is the one we're on. I'll hit enter, and it will re-slew. That's slewing the scope back to that star. So it's dashed out of frame there. Now it's coming back. There it goes, and it's popped it into the middle. Now, here comes the all-star polar align bit. Our scope is aligned. We're on a star. So I'm going to go back, back to the start. I'm going to click on the align button. Align. Then I'm going to go down. Hit polar align, enter. Go down a couple, align mount. Slewing to caster. So it knows we're on this, the star. Slewing back to the star. Now it wants us to do that center and align business again. So it wants us to get it back into the middle where it was. So I'm going to hit align. It's synced to caster. Polar align, beginning process. Here we go. So now it's going to move itself, it's going to move the telescope away from the star based on the degree of error. So all we have to do is hit enter and you'll see here the telescope has just moved slightly. It's gone back to where the star should be. Now if you look on the screen you'll see the star's off center. Now at this point we want to actually move the, we don't want to use the arrow keys, we want to actually move the mount. So we're going to use the mount's screws, the alignment screws, the RA and deck. And we're going to fiddle with those until we get that star in the middle. Yeah, beautiful. Now the star's in the middle. And the hand controller is still waiting for us to confirm that we've we've done that. So it's telling us adjust mount, adjust the altitude and azimuth, which we've done. So I'm just gonna hit enter. Polar align complete. You are now fully polar aligned and aligned as well. So our go-to's will work well. Um, we can start astro imaging, we can start guiding, whatever else we need to do. Um, so that's it guys. Hopefully that helps you. Here I am in the dark. <laughs> that was a, a difficult video because I am in the dark and negotiating the DSLR as well as the big Rasa CGX uh, rig and the roof as well but I went slowly so that you guys could see what was going on and hopefully um, the focus wasn't too distracting and you got to see the alignment process uh, that's all there is to it once that's done you can if you leave everything set up in an observatory uh, setting then you just use the last alignment instead of two star alignment next time and you don't have to do that you just go again but if you are out in the field, it's a really quick and easy way to get aligned and it's um, really, really accurate. So you'll be accurate enough to do uh, quite long exposures and astro imaging. So that should help a lot. Okay, bye bye.